This is a video update of my hydroponic system. Um, this is on the bok choy grow. Mainly I'm growing bok choy. I think uh, maybe I showed you before I had some sweet potato right here. And yeah, I was correct. It is a ivying plant. I've never grown potato too much and I don't know much about them. I guess I'm one of those uh, people that kind of try to stay away from because of their starches. But um, I hear sweet potatoes a lot better so I thought I would give it a try. I'm going to try to start eating some potatoes. Um, this is the catnip plant and it is not taking the transfer from soil to aquaponics too well. Um, when you're dealing with anything that's going to be soilless gardening in a hydroponic medium, um, there's a lot of people that say that, hey, you can't take a soil plant and convert it over to hydroponics. And I don't, I don't know why they say that. It's not necessarily true for aquaponics, which is a type of hydroponics mixed with aquaculture. So in aquaponics, it's perfectly fine. You just got to do a thorough rinsing of the roots and get all the dirt out of there so you're not introducing any type of bacteria that could, you know, cause root rot or anything like that. But the banana tree that I have in the back back there, um, that's a musman banana tree. I think they top out about three three foot and they flower and I had one in here last year and many plants last year that I bought as soil and rinsed the roots really really good I mean so they're almost pure white very delicate process you gotta not destroy the roots as you clean them but last year uh, we got the banana tree to actually flower um, however we not we never got bananas because the year ended um, but it's really cool it's called a musman banana tree um, it's either musman or musaman, but it's a dwarf banana tree and uh, it gets little finger bananas on it. It's pretty cool. So, anyways, just to prove a point that yeah, you can. A majority of the plants uh, right here, here, every pretty much every plant here that's not bok choy was uh, started in soil. And some of them sometimes they have transplants shock, but they get over it and they usually do a lot better in the um, aquaponic system. But uh, this is the bok choy that I got growing. Growing, it's not baby bok or anything like that. It's the regular one, so um, they're going to get a lot larger. I can see uh, some lightning right here. Looks like there might be a little bit of a nitrogen deficiency. Um, they're using up all the nutrients that's left over from last year before I introduce new fish. Um, I do have one fish in here, however, a student brought in a, one of their fish fishes that was dying. And I don't see where he's at. Oh, he's back there in that corner. And you can't make him out at all. I got this net over it because, man, those tilap tilapia like to jump out. But I have uh, just one Oscar in here right now. Um, mainly just because I didn't have anywhere else to put him. I didn't really want to introduce a fish into the system yet. But it's about time to do that. Actually, it's a little bit overdue. Uh, but I was just giving you an update on uh, what it looked like, the progress of the system. I'll probably in about two weeks give another update of this bok choy before we harvest it. Um, this is uh, some celery that we planted in here. A tomato plant that came out of nowhere. Um, I'll probably take that out. Tomatoes don't do too well in young systems like this one. I'll have to wait till later on. I might do one tomato plant. Um, but we're going to switch over to my hydroponic system and I'm going to show you the tomato plants that we're starting over there. All right, here's the hydroponic system. All the kale has been harvested, and we're gonna start again with some seeds that I got off Amazon. This is my second year doing them. First time recording and keeping track of a video log of them, but they're called Red Robin Cherry Tomato Seeds. I've got them from Amazon before, and they tend to sprout really, really well. The interesting thing about this one is I've done tomatoes in this system before and it was pretty horrible because the tomatoes ended up being so tall they reached the top of this tent and they hadn't even flowered yet. These tomatoes are dwarf tomatoes. They max out in height, I think about two foot. So they'll get about this big and they're just covered with tomatoes. So um, we're just starting it. We don't have uh, any nutrients. Uh, surprisingly, 
I don't think you can see. Um, we're running at um, zero. Zero ppm, 7.1 pH, and a temperature of 71 degrees. Uh, the pH definitely needs to be dropped, but we're not really worrying about it a whole lot because as you can see, we haven't even got our first little root tap root to come out of the seeds. So they haven't even germinated yet. They've been in here since yesterday, so we're not worrying about this too much. But I'll definitely be um, dropping the pH once I see that they have germinated and that root tip has come out. Um, I'm going to just flash over real quick to the aquaponic system again so I can show you my trimeter that's on there. Alright, this is my trimeter on my aquaponic system. You can see it's a little cooler over there because we're not keeping this inside a tent. Um, my pH is pretty high, 8.2. And I noticed uh, last year, towards the end of the year, I was having an issue with uh, the pH uh, going up towards the end of the year. And I heard that as you get, uh, as you run a system for longer, you can have issues with uh, pH rising like that. So I'll be buying some type of supplements that's plant and fish safe that I can use to lower the pH in the system. And just keep it a little lower so it's uh, safe for the fish, but also more optimal for the plants. Uh, with tilapia, um, I've done research and they can go all the way up to 10, um, 10.0 pH, which is ridiculous. Uh, most fish would die in that. Oh, hey, there he is. Hey, guy. Okay, yeah, you're going to be scared? All right. He's probably hungry. But anyways, that's the bell for class, so I'm going to have to go. But the nutrients on this system is, or well, the PPM is uh, 220 and... Unfortunately with that, I don't know how much of the nitrates it is and how much just free-floating solids in the water it is. But anyways, bell rung. Gotta start class. Later guys. Subscribe and thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video.